Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Dean's Hobby Stop in Owasso, Michigan. Dean's has one of the Midwest's largest selections of used kits at great prices. They also feature new kits and supplies as well. Call Dean's to get their mail order list featuring hundreds of vintage kits or check their website for great deals on both new and classic models. This review covers the 1955 Chevy two-ton steak truck. It's a 148 scale kit from Atlantis, number H-1401. Now I rate this about a skill two kit uh, because of some of the um, multi-piece construction in the cab. Now in 1955 it was the second series uh, of the body style of truck and the first year for its new body style and it featured some new stuff a wraparound windshield and an optional wraparound rear window on the deluxe cabs. Now power steering and power brakes were available for the first time on GM trucks and the electrical system system was upgraded from 6 volts to 12. And now the truck modeled here came with a 261 uh, cubic inch inline 6 engine. Now this kit was introduced in 1955 by Ravel and had numerous reboxes over the years. Finally, it was resurrected by Atlantis in 2020. And the kit has 52 pieces molded in blue and clear windows, which Atlantis tooled up for construction, uh, as opposed to the no window version from 1955. Now it's got nice, uh, nice decals. And when the kit is done, it'll be about five and a half inches long, two inches wide, and one and three quarter inches tall. And, uh, oh, uh, that uh, you hear that tapping? That's Nudie. He's got a question from behind the divider there. He's our uh, program director. Uh, what's your question, Newt? That's a nice subject for a kit. I don't see many of the newer kits that include accessory parts and figures like that. Well, you're certainly right about that, Newt. There's very few of the new tooled kits that uh, come with any kind of accessories, you know, other than optional parts for the kit itself. It's not like the heyday when uh, there just didn't seem to be that much cost in producing extra pieces to make a sale. So you see the parts uh, from the kit here, including the uh, newly tooled window glass. Uh, it's nice and clear. Um, there's just a very little flash around the edges, so the molds were cleaned up nicely. And um, as you can see, they're in blue, so we'll talk about that. We'll be using Model Master liquid type uh, cement for the most part, sometimes super glue for fragile pieces and some white glue for those windows. And remember to heed the manufacturer's use and safety guidelines when you're using any of the products that you see or hear used in the review. And here are the decals for the kit. They're nicely done. Uh, the register is good. You may need some uh, setting solution for some of the larger ones to handle contours, but for the most part they'll go right in place. Just use plenty of water when you're putting them into position. To uh, start off, I just sprayed um, the entire contents of the pieces here with some Stenel Res uh, black primer. Um, use a primer that's compatible with your uh, color coats uh, and coat all the pieces uh, to give them a good uh, bite for paint. Now with uh, construction, uh, we're going to start with parts, uh, you know, first one through seven, the frame, floor, seat, dash, steering column, wheel, and fenders. And I test fitted the parts and removed any of the flash and seam lines, you know, that need to be cleaned up. And the steering wheel was painted semi-gloss black. Now I detailed the dash with a chrome pen. And finally, I painted the rest of the dash a body color, which was a gloss blue. Now after the paint had dried, I glued the seat to the floor and that assembly to the frame. Now remember too, you have to remove paint uh, from any surface you want to glue together for good adhesion. Next, I glued the um, fenders to the frame and the steering wheel to the column. After that, I added the instrument panel to the dash in the place provided and the steering column to the instrument panel and floor. I also painted the um, seat a, uh, a dark brown to simulate the original leather seating. The next step, there are a lot of pieces. Um, I collected the parts, the, uh, the engine halves, carburetor, radiator, grill, and fender quarters, and the doors and fender quarters, the back of the cab roof and the windshield, the rear and side glass parts, and I removed any imperfections that I found in them uh, with a hobby knife and some sand sticks. Uh, you can clean those up pretty nicely. 
So, glue the engine halves together and glue the carburetor assembly to that. And then I painted the engine a light blue along with the oil pan that's molded in with the front inner fenders. Uh, I painted the exhaust manifold a reddish brown along with the um, exhaust pipe underneath the truck to simulate a little rust. And I painted the intake a flat black, the carburetor an argent silver, and the air cleaner a gloss black. And then I detailed the oil cap and the pulleys with some flat black. I painted the radiator flat black as well and detailed the battery and firewall with some silver paint. There's not many details I, and I glued the engine and the radiator to the frame assembly. Look for the locating spots and put that into position. Remember to scrape off that paint before you glue them. Well I'll just say this, having the cab and fenders in five pieces due to the molding technology of the times makes this a little difficult to assemble nicely. You'll need to do a lot of test fitting, some sanding and fitting uh, before it looks right. Now, there was a gap in the center fender on both sides of the truck that needed to be filled and I started by aligning the fenders and doors and holding them into place. Then I test fitted the rear of the cab and found that the seat needed to be moved forward inside and the doors needed to be moved back to allow the back of the cab to fit. Now this required mounting points for the seat to be removed and attaching the seat in a forward position with a little small gap that was created uh, in the center of the fender and that had to be filled but this allowed the back of the door or the cab to fit properly. So after test fitting the roof I glued the doors and the, uh, of, and the rear of the cab into place. Before uh, gluing the roof into position I glued the rear and the side glass into place with some clear glue uh, and I uh, test fit the windshield. Then I glued on the roof and uh, installed the windshield into position. Then I glued the flatbed onto the frame and I set the hood in place without some glue so that it can be opened later. And using some uh, what we call micro scale brand masking fluid, I masked the clear parts and after cleaning up the side panels uh, it was ready for paint. So using a gloss blue I painted the bed, body and side panels with an airbrush. While the bodywork was drying I painted the rims on the wheels white which took uh, several coats because of the black primer and then I painted the tires a rubber black which is kind of dark gray. Then I decided to paint the boxes and the barrels and I assembled the barrel halves and sanded the seam then painted the boxes and barrels with some deck tan. After the deck tan had dried I used brown wash to create a wood grain look. Next um, I had decided to uh, start detailing the underbody and you know I looked for some suspension uh, uh, pictures on the internet and I, I used basically the image of the in, in the instructions and gather up parts 18 to 26 uh, the front rear axles tie rods tires and wheels sp the springs the mud flaps the spare tire holder and the tail light with the license plate and then first I removed the flash and seam lines and cleaned them up then I started with the rear axle and the springs I glued the springs to the frame pressed the tires and the rims to the axle and then glued the axle uh, onto the springs and then next I glued the tie rod to the front axle and glued the springs to the frame next I placed the tires and the rims on the front axle now make sure that the model sits on all tires and uh, I test fitted the front axle on the springs and then after test fitting I found I had to add a sliver of plastic under the spring on the driver's side to make all the tires sit on the ground. So then I glued the parts together and I glued the spare tire to the pin on the frame and glued the holder over the tire uh, to the frame. Next uh, add the mud flap to the frame and then the tail light assembly to the rear of the frame. And next I wanted to weather the bed of the truck a little bit and using some tan brown, red brown and brown wash I streaked up the wood panels on the floor of the bed uh, and some lighter wash later on the side racks after removing the part numbers from the bottom slat of each rack. And then after getting the floor nicely distressed I used some silver to show some scrapes on the metal straps. I was sure to leave some body color on areas that would see less wear and then I wanted the truck to look relatively new and yet look like a work truck. So at that point I removed the window masks 
and glued on the rear view mirror. After finishing up the bed, uh, I painted the grill and the bumper white and I used a chrome pen on the headlights and bezel, the hood emblem and the marker lights there and the mirror. And after the chrome had dried, I detailed the hood emblem with some black and red. Now I placed the racks on the bed and then I decaled the model. Used plenty of warm water. The decals are small, but they uh, are pretty nicely detailed and they went down with no problems uh, with a little setting solution over curves. I sealed the decals on with uh, on the cargo with some flat clear and then uh, the body decals were sealed in with some pledge floor gloss uh, through the airbrush. And now the kit came with two figures and um, they're difficult to paint because they're very small but I gave it a shot. I painted them with some Stenel Res uh, black primer and then I sanded off some imperfections and painted the pants and the bibs uh, a medium blue. Then I painted the shirts white and beige and their boots are black. Um, the sack was painted tan and the belt was black. Now I painted one figure with a light skin tone and reddish brown hair and the other with a dark skin tone and black hair. And the figures are, like I said, um, you know, kind of small to make look realistic. But uh, from, <laughs> from a distance, 148 figures kind of uh, don't need much detail unless you're getting really close. Now the kit is a single purpose build and all that I had left was a couple of decals that I didn't use. Well, there you have it. Your model is done and um, it's an older kit, uh, I'll say, uh, and in the 148 scale, uh, it only really fits in with uh, the aircraft that were dominant in that era at 148 scale as a diorama piece maybe. Now the five part cab makes it difficult. It's not for beginners. And the engine compartment isn't really very well detailed and the oil pans molded to the inner fenders. So if you just want a diorama part, you could just glue the hood shut and have a curbside kit. But still, I enjoyed putting the kit together. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy that Atlantis brought it back for us. And um, although there was a little less detail in some areas because of the size, um, it's, it's not really a bad because it looks great on your shelf. So if I were you, I'd buy one and do just that. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews. And you can find us on Facebook or our website, rideonreplicas.com. Thanks.